All right, we're back. Welcome, everybody, to the Wizard 101 musical tour of The Spiral. This time it's going to be Abbey Road from the world Avalon. This is Avalon. This is uh, inspired by Excalibur and King Arthur and all the old Renaissance movies. This tune called Abbey Road was be the, the tune after the hub and the hub you're talking and, and, you know, going to the shops and stuff and looking around. This was to get you out more into the... Uh, adventure areas and start fighting. So let's take a listen to Abbey Road from Avalon. Let me say from the offset that this might sound a little different than the in-game version does. That's because these tracks are all starting to get pretty old and they're using a previous version of Contact that uh, I've since upgraded from. So I have to go back in and, and try and refine the sounds that I'm that I was using back then. I may have not been able to find the exact sounds that I was using, but I think I got maybe 93% of the way there. This is the one instance of Contact that's playing most of the tonal stuff. This is a, an auto harp via uh, viola, nylon guitars. Uh, this is the female chanting sound that's in there. You can see that they're all taken from various different libraries. Uh, some of them are from the built-in contact library. Some of them are the horn, the really nice legato horn solo sound is from Cinesample Cinebrass. This is from Project Sam Symphobia. Uh, these are LA scoring strings. Well, more scoring strings. I mean, they're all coming from a lot of different places. Uh, this sound here, the auto harp, this is from uh, a smaller company called Boulder Sounds. And they do uh, smaller libraries that are usually less expensive. And I, I really like, you know, just if I need the sound of an auto harp or the sound of, uh, you know, some of the early, uh, I have some recorders and stuff. If I need just a specific sound, I can buy that. Because libraries usually come in two flavors. There's the very specific and and the more general that has a lot of different sounds, but they're usually more expensive, obviously. So right off the top, uh, we're, we're hearing a lot of different instruments playing at the same time. The auto harp is, is probably the meat and potatoes here. When, you know, somebody says to me, Abbey Road and, and Excalibur, and uh, King Arthur, obviously, in addition to the Beatles, I'm thinking, you know, a nice road leading through the woods and there's leaves scattered about. Um, and, you know, maybe you're traveling through there with, you know, your band of adventurers. And back in the past, they'd have uh, a minstrel that would follow them around and sing songs of, uh, you know, of their bravery or 
or not if you watch Monty Python and generally keep them entertained and uh, in good spirits on the on the road. So I wanted a little bit of a kind of carefree thing. I think, you know, I keyed in on this rhythm here. And probably just kind of started off there and then, you know, built a, a melody around that. That you know, in, the, in the Renaissance, different forms of music uh, started to, to come together and blend. There were a lot more influences on people. Uh, printing presses and stuff made uh, musical texts more common and more people. It, it wasn't just a, an oral tradition anymore. It was, you know, people were learning how to do music through musical texts that, you know, came from elsewhere. So there were a lot more... Uh, influences on, on music of the time period than in most of the time periods before, which were, you know, pretty local to where they were being written. So we started getting uh, different forms of music and, and, uh, and like the minor mode here started to become more, uh, more acceptable because this, most of this melody here is in uh, a minor mode. So this, this lute, eh, it's a kind of early guitar has a melody here. Flips into major here for a bit. Back in One of the challenges of faking a stringed instrument, a, a strummed instrument, is that you have a keyboard, and with the keyboard you can play ten notes, you know, all at the same time. Uh, a guitar can't play; it can't hit all of its strings at the same time. There's a little bit of a delay as you as you strum the strings. So one of the techniques that I use when I'm uh, kind of faking the uh, strummed instruments here is to try and kind of roll the chords a little bit it's usually the the lowest string is on the top of the stringed instrument so that's the first one you hit and then uh, you, you kind of progress through the strings going higher so now whenever you get two people playing the same part there's always going to be slight discrepancies between uh, the two parts and so you get a little bit of a, a little slop thrown in there um, and that's, I did maintain a little bit of this to, to try and make it sound like two people playing instead of one. This nylon guitar sound has a neat uh, feature in that when you hit it particularly hard, the note bends up. It bends up to that note. So this is lighter velocities, but when you hit it really hard. Dun. And when you're playing, if you can, sometimes that can actually uh, lend a little bit more credibility as it, you know, it sounds like the, the player's hand is sliding over the strings or, you know, there's a little bit, just a little more flavor to the part. So once you get through this opening statement, vocal music started to become a lot more interesting with, with things like madrigals. Uh, with multiple voices uh, singing different parts in the Renaissance. I wanted to get a little more vocal uh, interest in here. Well, a little bit. I can't do too much of it because there's there's always a lot of uh, dialogue going on in the game. But I wanted to have uh, a female vocal through this. And I have a really neat library called, uh, it's from the Forgotten Voices collection from 8DO. It's, the library is called Francesca. And it's Francesca Genko who... Uh, does like, you know, chants and, and uh, spiritual singing. And so this phrase is just a pretty simple evolving note. And that's all it is. Uh, you don't really need much, I think, to kind of establish that through here. composing with these libraries of, of phrases where you, you, you can't change the note that they sing necessarily, uh, sometimes the note that they wind up singing kind of informs your harmony. Right here, it went to a, a, a very odd, uh, it's a very odd note to go to um, in this particular key, but that, uh, I, I found a chord that functioned as a nice little pivot to the next, to, to the key of something else. <laughs> So when I uh, when I think of Renaissance music, I think of like these recorders and, and kind of pipes. This is part of what, what took me a really long time to, to get some of this music. 
ready uh, to make this video. These are from a, a very old library called uh, Motu Symphonic Instrument, which I, I don't, hasn't been supported in a really long time. In fact, the, uh, the library itself, I had to find a new uh, platform to kind of plug it in. UVI Workstation uh, let me play these these old uh, Motu libraries. You know, say what you will about old libraries. Every once in a while, there's a sound that's just really evocative and it only exists in this one library. So I probably only have this UVI workstation for some of these MSI uh, instruments. So I have the alto recorder on the bottom and the soprano on top. So here it's backed up by the auto harp. It could have worked with just the, the recorders playing. I probably didn't need to double it with the auto harp, but it's sometimes when these parts are too exposed, the instruments are too exposed, you hear some of the, the things that don't sound fully real. So it's kind of obfuscated with the harp here. So I didn't do a lot of, there, there wasn't a whole lot of percussion in music like this. Um, I needed to keep time, so I've got some of these jangly tambourines and and just the kind of the bell part from Arik and, and a frame drum, which was uh, a percussion instrument they would have used at the time. But none of them was doing anything too surprising. do I've I've plugged this before but the Cine samples Cinebrass stuff is amazing I've got their Cine winds and uh, some other percussion stuff from them too just really inspiring sounds this is the uh, the horn solo here and it's the their approach is for every instrument like the French horn here there's a legato patch and then there's a patch that has uh, articulations as well like more uh, staccato stuff and you can go back and forth with the sustain pedal but their legato stuff is just is so beautiful just the transitions between one one note and the next it sounds like a, a real player a lot of fun and a lot of uh, very inspiring to just play with the sound i probably came up with this uh, horn line here just by letting the sound do what it does best sometimes when you're writing music you're just trying to you're trying to fill time and that can lead to kind of composing in blocks where it's like here's a section and then eight bars later here's a section eight bars later here's a section uh, and here is an example of, of where I try to take an idea and develop it uh, develop it a little bit instead of just you know doing eight bars the introduction has this this rhythm da 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 da, -da. that idea further on here and then we take it into the horn here instead of the instead of the da 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 the horn just going da 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 the idea is to change the idea a little bit every time you you hear it just to keep that forward momentum going. some more of that uh, those rolled chords trying to convince the ear that they're being strummed rather than uh, played on a keyboard <laughs> that does it for Avalon. 
Uh, remember to leave a like, uh, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what else you want to see in specific pieces from other worlds you want me to cover, and any other ideas you have for this video series. All right, thanks everybody. Bye-bye.